Sharpening the crosscut saw involves one more angle compared to sharpening the rip saw. When we sharpen a crosscut saw, we have to deal with the rake angle, and then we also have to deal with the fleam angle. And if you recall, the fleam angle is the angle of the bevel on the teeth in relation to the sides of the saw plate. So perfectly straight across would be zero degrees of fleam, which would be our rip saw. And as we start to angle the front of that tooth in relationship to the sides of the saw plate, we are adding fleam. Now, the typical rake angle for a crosscut saw is between about 15 and 30 degrees. And the typical fleam angle for a crosscut saw is also between 15 and 30 degrees. Now, just like the rip saw, a low rake angle is going to be faster cutting and more aggressive, while a higher rake angle is going to make the saw smoother cutting. When we think about the fleam, a low fleam angle is going to make the saw closer to a rip saw, so it's going to be a bit rougher cutting However, the edge on the tooth is going to be a little bit more durable. As we increase the fleam angle, we make the tooth more knife-like, and those bevels are going to slice more cleanly the higher fleam angle we use. However, the higher that angle goes, the less durable that edge is going to be. For my own saws, I've settled on about 15 degrees of rake because I tend to prefer a faster cutting, more aggressive saw. However, I also prefer about 25 degrees of fleam. I'm not overly concerned about having an edge that's a little less durable because I know I can touch that saw up in about five minutes worth of filing. So instead of a more durable edge, I prefer a cleaner cutting edge. Filing the crosscut saw starts the same way as filing the rip saw by joining the teeth. So I joint as many times as needed to get a small flat on the tip of each tooth and ensure that I maintain a properly breasted tooth line. The file holder for the crosscut saw is slightly different than for the rip saw. With the crosscut saw, we do the same thing, drill a hole and we draw in our rake angle at 15 degrees and this is the line that we align the side of the file with. But I've also cut the sides of the block at 25 degrees, and this is going to represent our fleam angle. And in use, what I'll do is I'll maintain this 25 degree angle perpendicular to the saw blade in order to establish and maintain a consistent fleam angle. And I'll just do this by eye. Now filing crosscut teeth is slightly different from filing rip teeth because I can't just file every single tooth like I did before. Recall that with the cross-cut teeth, there are bevels to make the teeth the shape of knives, and those bevels alternate on every other tooth. So if I just filed every single tooth like I did with the rip saw, I'd be filing the bevels on every tooth in the same direction, and the saw wouldn't work properly. I have to make sure that the bevels are filed in alternate directions on adjacent saw teeth. So instead, what I'm gonna do my first time through is I'm going to file every other tooth. You can see here how the bevel angles of the teeth are created based upon the angle that the file is held to the saw. As I file the gullet, I'm filing the front of one tooth, as you can see here, and the back of this tooth, which is at a different angle, so you can't really see it on the camera. So that I file the bevel on the front of this tooth and on the back of this tooth. So if I were to file every single gullet, like I did with the rip saw, I'd file the bevels on the wrong side of this tooth and this tooth and this tooth and this tooth, and this tooth right? So the saw wouldn't cut correctly. So instead, I have to file every other tooth and make sure that you're filing the direction of the existing bevels. So every tooth, because this is a cross-cut saw and it was sharpened before, is going to have a bevel on it already. 
So I want to try and file in the same direction that those existing bevels are on the teeth. Now, when I get as far as I can, I'll move the saw down in the vise and I'll continue to file until I get all the way up to the toe. And I'll also shift my body position because I want to start back here and I really don't want to be reaching. I want to be filing directly in front of me so that I can maintain my angles properly. So as I work my way up the saw, I'll move my body position. So now I have to file all the other teeth that I haven't touched yet. So I'll move the saw back to its original position in the vise. And again, I'm going to move my body. I now have to change the direction of the fleam. Whereas before I was filing in this direction, now I need to be filing in this direction. So I'm going to use this side of the angle guide and keep this side of the block perpendicular to the saw now and file in this direction. So I'll now repeat the process of filing every other tooth all the way up the blade except this time I'm going to file in this direction, again holding this face of the angle guide perpendicular to the saw blade. And notice too, I've also turned my body. So before I was sitting this way, now I'm sitting this way. And that is to facilitate easier filing in this direction. So I'll start again at the heel and work my way to the toe. Now, just like filing the rip teeth, the biggest mistake I see students make is not filing far enough. Every one of these teeth should come to an extremely sharp point that should actually grab and stick to your fingers if you touch the, the tips of the teeth. So don't be afraid of going too far. In fact, I would encourage you to go one more file stroke than you think you need to, to make sure you have that tiniest little bit of flat off the tips of those teeth. And once again, coloring the tips of the teeth with the magic marker can really help gauge your progress here. So just a quick note on that high pitched screeching that you're hearing. If you're getting that sound when you're filing your saw, it means one of two things. First, it could mean that your file is getting dull. And in fact, this file is starting to get a little dull. It is about time I switch to a new corner. But since I'm done filing this saw, I'll skip that for now and switch to a new corner when I file my next saw. It could also mean that your saw vise is not holding your blade firmly enough and you're getting some vibration. Let me show you what I mean. If I file a tooth in the center of this vise, no squeaking at all. But as soon as I move down here, I get that nail on chalkboard screeching sound. That's because this vise is starting to get a little bit worn out and it doesn't grip at the ends quite as tightly as it grips in the middle. And this is very common with old cast iron vices as well. Now to fix that, you could file the center of the jaws a little bit to make them sort of hollow, and I may do that to this vise eventually. You can also just clamp the ends a little bit tighter. But if you're getting that high-pitched screeching sound over the entire blade as you're filing, first check your file. Make sure you're using a fresh, sharp file. Um, new old stock files oftentimes are dull just from rust and sitting in the box for years and years and years. Um, so while new old stock files can be good, if it's an old file, I would replace it first with a new sharp file and make sure that the issue isn't the file. If with a new file, you're still getting that screeching, um, you may need to work on your saw vise a little bit to get it to grip the saw a little more tightly because it should sound like that. 
It shouldn't be a nails on chalkboard kind of sound when you're filing a saw. If it is like that, something is wrong. Check your file, check your vise. Now this saw is done, so it's ready to be set. And just like setting the rip saw, we're going to set every other tooth as we work our way up the saw. However, now we have to pay attention not just to the direction that these teeth were set the first time, we also have to pay attention to the bevels. Now if the last saw that you set was your rip saw, make sure you change the setting on your saw set to be appropriate for the saw that you're setting now. This saw is an eight point per inch saw, so I've set my saw set for eight points per inch. Now, when we're setting cross cut teeth, we want the flat of the tooth, let me move this out of the way, the flat side of the tooth to be against the anvil of the set. So in this case, this is the flat side of this tooth, this is the flat side of this tooth, this is the flat side of this tooth, etc. And you can see here are the bevels, here and here, here and here, here and here. The bevels on this tooth are on this side, here and here. So we want to set this tooth and this tooth and this tooth in that direction. So we're going to set every other tooth, and we're going to push on the beveled side of the tooth against pushing the flat side of the tooth against the anvil. And we'll just work our way up the saw, setting every other tooth with a nice firm squeeze. And just like before, once I get all the way up, I'll flip the saw around. Put it back in the vise, and now we'll do the opposite teeth in the other direction. Now just like with the rip saw, once I'm done setting, I'm going to side joint the teeth. Just one pass on each side, just the weight of the file. And this is going to even out the set just in case I didn't put it in too evenly. So now, after side joining, this saw is ready for test cutting.